Hey everybody, this is Barak Mutaswamy and Amir Makhtadari. This lab is on operational amplifier circuits and positive feedback. As usual, we'll go over the theory and then do a lab demo. So let's get started. Okay, the goal of this lab is to sketch V out versus V in for this circuit. V out versus V in is also called as the voltage transfer characteristic. We're of course going to verify our results experimentally and explain any discrepancies. Note that RI is 10K, RF is 20K. The op amp that we use is the LMC6482 from Texas Instruments. You could use other op amps, but there are some issues with the physical implementation that we'll address later. Recall also that you have so far studied operational amplifier circuits in negative feedback, voltage follower, inverting amplifier, non-inverting amplifier, etc. Notice that this circuit is in positive feedback, that is the output is fed back to the non-inverting input. This circuit is also, no, is also known as, excuse me, a Schmidt trigger, named after US scientist Otto H. Schmidt, who invented the trigger in 1934 while he was a graduate student. Okay, before we begin, we have to understand the problem. If the positive feedback circuit were the same as the negative feedback circuit, then there is no reason for this lab. Apparently, something is different. To address this difference and hence begin the process of understanding the problem, we'll talk about the main ideas behind this lab. That is, we need to understand the difference between static circuits, which is what we're given, and dynamic circuits that uses dynamic elements. Notice the inclusion of capacitor CP in the dynamic circuit. Since capacitors and inductors involve derivative relationships between voltage and current, circuits that utilize these elements have currents and voltages that change with time, hence the term dynamic. Now going back to a textbook op-amp model, we can see that there are no dynamics in the op-amp model. So the question is, can we analyze our static circuit simply by using the familiar op-amp model in golden rules? The answer is yes. Looking at the dynamic model, you can see that I've labeled the capacitor as CP, where P stands for parasitic. In other words, this element models the physical non-idealities. For example, CP could model op-amp input resistance. Since physically the op-amp input resistance is not infinite for all frequencies of the input. Well, it is known that f physical circuits have capaci capacitances and inductances in them. How does this help us analyze the Schmidt trigger? Great question. The answer lies in the difference between positive and negative feedback. You may have heard that positive feedback leads to instability, whereas negative feedback doesn't. But a subtle yet important point that is lost in that statement is that stability is defined using differential equations. Dynamic systems are stable or unstable. So the, the circuit that we are given is static, hence the analysis approach is to separate out the statics from the dynamics. Exactly. That observation is correct, Amir, and that is where we are going to start. So, here is the plan of attack. We will simply derive V out versus V in using the op amp golden rules. Next, we will interpret the transfer characteristic. That is, we will try to understand what is going on. Finally, we need to come up with an experiment to confirm our derivation. Amir, why don't you derive V out versus V in? It will be very good practice for you in applying the op amp golden rules. Okay, since the op amp is in the linear region, we know VP is equal to VN. Applying Kirchhoff's current law and Ohm law, we get the current through RI is equal to the current through RF. Since the current going into the non-inverting terminal is zero, I have used Ohm's law to write the two currents in terms of node voltages. Since VN is connected to ground, we can simplify the expression and finally plug in RI equals 10K, RF equals 20K to get our V out equals negative two VN. In the positive saturation region, we know that V out equals VCC, and VP must be greater than or equal to VN. Thus, we find a relationship between VP, VCC, and VN. We then eliminate VP in the V out equation to determine the final V out equation. Plugging in numbers, we get V out equals 5 volts if VN is greater than or equal to negative 2.5 volts. Notice that the positive saturation voltage gives rise to a negative number in the VN inequality. More will be said about this later. Negative saturation works the same way as positive saturation. Notice again that 
similar to the positive saturation region, the negative saturation voltage gives rise to a positive number in the VN inequality. More will be said about this later. Phew, that was a quite a bit of work, Bharat. Um, why don't you now sketch V out versus V in? Thanks, Amir. We have sketched V out versus V in relation. Notice that this is not a function since the picture does not satisfy the vertical line test. The software that we used is the open source SAGE software. SAGE stands for Software for Algebraic and Geometric Experimentation. Anyway, notice how it is a f the sketch is a funny looking inverted Z curve. The picture is telling us that there's a section of the graph for which there are three possible values of V out given a value of V in. That is physically impossible. Also, if I physically sweep V in and plot V out versus V in using the XY mode in the scope, I get this. You're correct, Amir. Your physical picture is correct, but the reason why you don't get the middle segment is due to parasitic elements in the physical realization. So you're telling me there's another way to get the correct static transfer characteristic of the Schmidt trigger? Correct. The key word is static. So we will utilize mathematics to physically obtain V out versus V in. This was first done in 1991 by Chua and Kennedy. Their work is reported in the paper, Hysteresis in Electronic Circuits, a circuit theorist perspective that is available via Google Scholar. Their test circuit is reproduced here. The circuit consists of two components the inverting summing amplifier that has an external input voltage U and our Schmidt trigger. The resistance is RU, RH and RV in the inverting summing amplifier are all equal. Hence at the inverting input of the inverting summing amplifier, here's the inverting input of the inverting summing amplifier, we get the condition U plus V out plus V in equals zero or V out equals minus V in minus U. Hmm. So basically, the inverting summing amplifier constrains the Schmidt trigger V out versus V in. Correct. So we have derived our Schmidt trigger transfer characteristic as shown. Notice that I've included the threshold voltages and the saturation voltages. This circuit will tell us if the inverted Z is correct or the Schmidt trigger transfer characteristic used in almost all the textbooks is correct. Why do you have AC feedback? Isn't that the purpose of the CFRB circuit? Excellent observation, Amir. Yes, this is AC feedback to eliminate high frequency noise. We'll discuss CF and RB more in the lab demo, but for now, notice that at DC, since CF is an open circuit, and there is no current into the inverting input of the Schmidt trigger, there is no current into RB. In other words, at DC, this circuit is the same as our static Schmidt trigger. Before we begin our lab demo, I want to emphasize that this U is our input in the inverting summing amplifier, and this circuit allows us to vary U. And what we're going to be doing is, in the lab demo, we're going to be increasing U, uh, increasing or decreasing input U, and that allows us to remove this V out versus negative V in up or down. Hence, this circuit will actually tell us either the inverted Z is the static or DC transfer characteristic of the Schmidt trigger, or if this is the static or DC transfer characteristics of the Schmidt trigger. Also note that in the physical circuit, U is a function generator. Now remember, of course, that uh, the op amp needs power supplies to operate, and in this case it is plus 5 volts and minus 5 volts. Now let us do our lab demo. OK, so here is the circuit. This is the LMC6482. It's a dual op amp chip, so there are two op amps in one chip. The left op amp, this is actually the Schmidt trigger with the AC feedback capacitor. 
here is the uh, inverting summing amplifier. So if you go up to the function generator, like Amir is moving it up, the settings I have are uh, 100 hertz sine wave. The amplitude is 10 volts peak to peak. It really doesn't matter if it's a sine or a sawtooth. You will get the same Z curve as you see here. So here's the Z curve. If you can zoom uh, move out, Amir, zoom out, we'll see the power supply up. Power supply is at plus or minus five volts. And if you look at the limits on this guy, the positive threshold, remember, is set by the negative power supply, and the negative threshold is set by the positive power supply. This is uh, consistent with the thresholds which we observe for the Schmidt trigger without any, like if you just do a, a simple sweep with the hysteresis. So yeah, the fact that we use the inverting summing amplifier helps us get this linear region. Now what I can do is if you go back to the function generator, I can show you the effects of frequency. So if you look at the frequency, I'm going to reduce this down to uh, 1 hertz. And then Amir will go back to the scope, and you can see how the trace is basic. It's basically tracing the. Oops, I'm not going in sync with the uh, waveform, but there it is. And now let's just look at. I'm going to increase the frequency back to uh, 100 hertz. Let's look at the effects of removing the AC feedback capacitor. And Amir, before we remove the capacitor, what should we do? We should turn off the power supply. Yep. So that's what he's going to do. I'll put off. And then I'm going to remove the easy feedback cap. And if I if you turn the power back on, you can see the effect of high frequency noise in this region. And again, this is due to parasitics in the physical circuit and it's basically telling you that this region is unstable. Now, a couple of points. The point number one is the AC feedback capacitor for the LMC6042 that we used are 100 picofarads and the RB is 10K. Now these values may not work for a different operational amplifier but it's a simple matter of experimenting with uh, the AC feedback parameters to eliminate. Uh, this noise and that's it for the lab demo. Based on the lab demo we can conclude that the physical realization of the Schmidt trigger does display the inverted Z characteristics predicted by theory. The only discrepancy that occurs between the physical implementation and theory is the presence of high frequency noise that was removed by AC feedback. Note again that Chua and Kennedy's neat mathematical trick of using an inverting summing amplifier to constrain the V-out versus V-in of the Schmidt trigger helped us identify the correct static characteristics and remove the effects of parasitics that are the true cause of hysteresis. Okay, to further understand this lab, ask yourselves questions such as, is the Schmidt trigger inverting or not inverting Amir? Hmm. Since the input goes into the positive terminal, the Schmidt trigger must be non-inverting. Of course, physically if my input is greater than 2.5 volts and is increasing, the output is 5 volts. If my input is less than negative 2.5 volts and is decreasing, the output is negative 5 volts. So, the increasing-decreasing behavior with respect to input voltage occurs because of physical parasitic elements, and that is a source of memory or hysteresis. So we can make an inverting Schmidt trigger by feeding the input to the inverting terminal and grounding the left end of RI. Excellent. Correct on all observations. Now, on to the second question. How do we change the value of these threshold voltages? Hmm. This requires more work. Yes. Be careful. Remember, the positive rail sets the negative threshold, and the negative rail sets the positive threshold. I have another question. Can we utilize positive feedback in other ways? Yes, and that is the topic of the next lab, relaxation oscillators. We will see you then.